Hi, my name is Stacy Pitts. I'm the co-founder of CBD BioCare, and we are speaking with Dr. Frank Michalski, who is a chiropractor and functional medicine physician in Buffalo, New York. And today we are talking about a topic that is really uh, growing in popularity, if you will. It's just something we're hearing a lot about, and it's attention deficit di disorder. It's hyperactivity. It's these uh, conditions that we're finding more and more children are falling victim to. And so we're going to talk about what ADHD, what all of this means and what it's all about, and of course, how CBD can possibly help. So good morning, Dr. Frank. Good morning, Stacy. Thank you for having me again. As always, I really appreciate you being here. So tell us, uh, what is ADHD? How does that differentiate from hyperactivity disorder? Is it the same thing? Or, you know, you see, you hear all these acronyms. What do they all mean? So there's a few different subcategories of it that you could break it down into. I think the big two terms that we hear are ADHD and ADD. ADD, attention deficit disorder, ADHD, attention deficit hyperreactive disorder. So usually what we would think of is the individual with ADHD, they may be that person who has those hyperreactive body movements. This is that the child or adult that can't sit still. They're always fidgeting. They're extremely impulsive and almost a little bit chaotic in their body movements. This is more where we talk about ADHD. When you look at the literature and what I would tell people for today, we're, we, we basically mean the same thing. Whether we're discussing ADHD or ADD or any of the subcategories underneath, we're talking about that, that general disorder of attention deficit with or without hyperreactivity involved. Most kids these days, I don't really hear the term ADD in my offices often anymore. It's always ADHD. I would say that seems to be the generally expected term for this diagnosis today. You know, you also hear some criticism. People feel like we're always labeling. Um, but I feel like there, there is some benefit to not just uh, dismissing a child as uh, not being well behaved or um, they're not doing well in school or, you know, there's always something going on, um, possibly a learning disability or possibly an attention deficit disorder or hyperactivity or disorder. So how, what should a parent do if they start to notice some of these signs or maybe we should even identify what some of these signs of, uh, of a problem are where, where a parent doesn't believe that it's just maybe their child is misbehaving. Of course. So I think the easiest place to start would be is paying attention to your child. And I always tell people, look for other symptoms too. A lot of times, if we see depression or anxiety, we just stop right there. And that is the diagnosis. They have depression. They have anxiety. Well, depression and anxiety are common symptoms of ADHD. So perhaps you're going to want to speak to your physician or, or do your own research online and take those symptoms a step further. Now, the, the most obvious things would be is the inability to focus and pay attention, okay? Those hyperactive movements, lack of organization in completing day-to-day -day tasks, especially to a point where this lack of organization, this inability to focus is affecting your day-to-day -day activities. This child cannot achieve good grades even though they're really trying. A lot of times these children, they're trying as hard as they can and they're not achieving the results that either the parents or the teachers or, or the, the older adult peers are hoping for. When this is a repetitive problem over and over again, this is really when we have to start to think, okay, is there an attention deficit disorder? Now, I want to say this. We always think of this disease for kids. Two to 5% of adults are going to also be diagnosed with this. And there is a strong genetic correlation to ADHD. So if we have an adult that has ADHD, perhaps they should be considering that their children may be suffering from this as well. It shouldn't be dismissed. So genetics play a role. For our adolescent ages, nicotine usage, tobacco usage plays a large role in ADHD. We'll talk about why that plays a role in the development a little bit later on. And then other simple things too, 
food allergies can play a role. Micronutrient deficiencies can play a role. So I would also challenge someone, if your child's having trouble focusing in school, if they're having trouble outside of school, if they have some of these signs or symptoms of ADHD, I would assess all those things. Is there a genetic predisposition? What is their diet like? Are they eating a diet very poor in processed foods? If they're a little older, is there a nicotine addiction or an addiction? If we see all those things, especially if accompanied by depression and anxiety, we really have to become suspicious that there is a, a, an, an even bigger picture diagnosis of ADHD. So what I hear you saying is the ADHD may be a symptom of something else going on. So it's important to rule that out before you go into the treatment mode of treating ADHD specifically. Absolutely, because if we look at it as a symptom of something else, let's say, for example, food allergies, that's a very common one in the functional medicine world. Now, instead of going after just the ADHD for the treatment, we're now trying to eliminate those food allergies. Perhaps it's a symptom, there's been a lot of studies out there correlating it to low iron stores in a person's blood. Perhaps we treat them with an iron supplement. Um, maybe it's an omega-3 fatty acid deficiency. So we're looking for those other underlying root causes. Hopefully by treating those, we can then improve the overall outcome of the ADHD. Now, from a traditional medical standpoint, ADHD in today's world is usually treated using stimulants. And for a lot of people, that sounds kind of weird, right? Why would we give a child who's already hyperactive stimulants? This is an important thing to understand about ADHD. A lot of these younger people, what research is showing is that they have a decreased amount of dopamine. This is a neurotransmitter in their brain available to them. So dopamine is responsible for mood, behavior, sleep, appetite, body movements, that reward motivation center in the brain. A lot of these kids are showing that they have decreased dopamine levels. And some of the things I said before, decreased iron levels, decreased B vitamins, a lack of vitamin D, omega fatty acids, all of those things can lead to decreased dopamine levels in the brain. You know, I, I hear, um, I have a young son, and so, and I, I have two children, um, but it seems to be more, more prevalent with boys for some reason. Um, and that's just me as a mom from what I've heard. So that's, that's not scientific at, by any stretch. Um, but it seems like when a, a parent is suspecting a, a ADHD, they take them to a physician and the next time I follow up with a parent to say, how was your child? They say, oh, well, they put them on this medication. Seemed very fast, right? So there's no other, it doesn't seem that there's other evaluations that are taking place. And then my husband is, has coached baseball. And he said, I can always tell the kids that are on these drugs because they almost aren't there. You know, he can see it in their eyes. And he said, it's really concerning because it really affects their personality. So I understand that some kids are going to need prescription medications, um, but what is your evaluation? Do you feel like we're, we're really leaping to, to prescriptions very quickly um, before we evaluate the whole picture? And is it something that's more common in boys than girls? So what I can say is this for sure, when it comes to the prescription side of things, if we look at the research, the research on that is actually quite undecided and the effectiveness of these medications is certainly in question and even more so in question is the, the long-term side effects. These are amphetamines that we're giving to young, young children. When an adult consumes amphetamines, it's a, it's a, it's a criminal activity in many cases. When, it, when we prescribe them to a young child, it's a treatment. So that has always baffled me and I think when you look at the research, a lot of the research out there is baffled by this too, especially because when they're following up with these kids in a few years, what they're noticing in these young individuals is that their brain scans, PET scans of their brain, CT scans, they're very different from those children who were not given the drugs. Not saying for better or for worse, but they're certainly seeing changes, long-term changes. And this, this is a very fearful thing. Now, the other big concern that you'll see with these medications is 
a brain that is ADHD, we'll say ADHD positive, okay, overreactive, lower dopamine stores. These young individuals typically have very addictive personalities. There's actually clinical correlations between high THC marijuana usage and ADHD brains. Not saying that it caused it, saying that an ADHD brain craves that high THC marijuana. This is a common thing that we mention to adults if they're using it chronically and they don't know why. We mention to them, hey, have you ever been assessed for ADHD? You may have a dopamine problem. So addiction is my point. A lot of these kids already have addictive personalities. Now, what happens down the line when we remove them from those ADHD medications? They're usually turning to find that high, that amphetamine release from something else. And I believe that's one of the most scary things. And if you look at the literature, you can find that in the literature as well, too. That's, I think, the biggest fear about the medications. And it is currently the most, one of the highest diagnosed diseases among adolescents. So I always believe pumping the brakes, taking our time and asking questions is better than jumping into what we believe to be an instant solution. There's no instant solution to anything. Wow, that, that's a lot of really great information. Do you know if it's more common in boys or girls? So I believe it is, but I don't want to quote on that. We could easily get those statistics and put them in our, in our blog write-up for you. I can tell people the CDC, if you just type in ADHD statistics, CDC, you're going to pull it up. It's, it's the first thing that pops up. Yeah, I know. I kind of put you on the spot on that one. but it No, was that's just, fine. Just something that I, I've noticed um, – having a boy and a girl that I hear about it more, um, you know, with, with the moms of the boys. So, um, boys are maybe per, I know I'm stereotyping, but maybe just more hyperactive in general and it maybe goes hand in hand, but I love what you're talking about is, is seeking the root of the problem, especially if it's not hereditary, right. To find out what may be causing this. And, and that's such a big area of your practice with functional mess, uh, medicine is looking at the whole person and saying, okay, well, this is the symptom. So let's track down the cause. And in some cases, a child is going to need to be on medication, right? I mean, that's just the nature of, of things to be able to help them cope or help them with life or whatever the case may be. Of, um, of course, what we're seeing and the reason we're talking about this topic today is because in the cannabis space, CBD in particular, we are seeing a huge amount of people that are turning to CBD to help their kids and even the adults because it's helping adults focus. Um, I know for myself, for example, I, and I call it, you know, all the, the, the different plate spinning when I feel like I've got all the plate spinning and I am having a hard time focusing because it's like, oh my gosh, um, what do I do next? I'll take a little bit of CBD and then I, what I say is that it calms the noise. It helps bring everything into balance. And that's what I am finding. And then we have had many, many parents that have turned to CBD and actually replaced CBD uh, with, you know, the, the replacement is CBD from their children no longer taking medications. Our, um, someone who works in our office has two children in her home who no longer take medications. They're now taking CBD. Now, I've said all of that. I have to disclose that I am not a medical doctor. I am not saying that CBD 100% is going to cure or treat your child and get rid of ADHD, and I want you to consult a physician. I am just reporting on what we're seeing in our, in our office, and that's why we're having this conversation because there's great research that's being conducted, and there's um, great information that's being evaluated right now about how CBD can help. So what is your take on that, Dr. Frank? Of course. So I'll start by saying this, your commentary on what you're seeing happen. There actually was a study done where a group of people went through a bunch of online forms of cannabis users who were uh, ADHD positive, and they went through all this literature. So Reddit, all these online community forms, and they chose 401 very specific, highly chosen comments. And what they found was that over 25% of people who use cannabis reported that they had significant relief 
from ADHD symptoms, many reporting even more so than they were receiving from medication. Interesting. And I only mention that because there actually is one 2016 study that kind of validates a lot of what you just said about what people are saying. Now, I'll backtrack and talk a little bit about what it is we're seeing with CBD and ADHD. So I'm going to read a quote to you. This is for Dr. from Dr. Berman. He's one of the leading medical doctors on cannabis research and especially medicinal cannabis usage in the world of CBD. He describes ADHD as the brain is overwhelmed with too much information coming too fast. In ADHD, the brain is cluttered, is cluttered with and too aware of all the nuances of a person's daily experience. So imagine that, that's ADHD, okay? Now, he followed up that statement with this finding in one of his, one of his studies or his experience with using CBD products and children who were diagnosed with ADHD. Cannabis appears to treat ADD and ADHD by increasing the availability of dopamine. That has the same effect, but is a different mechanism of action than stimulants like Ritalin, a common prescription drug for ADHD, which act by binding to the dopamine and interfering with its breakdown. Now, I know we have right now two younger individuals. They were both referred to our offices actually by a psychiatrist that we've kind of networked with. And what had happened was the one, the one child, very young, he was on so many drugs, the school was the one who contacted the psychiatrist and said, what's happening to this kid? He can barely stand up. And they had him on what's essentially horse tranquilizers. Now, I'll tell you, I've seen the kid in my office when he wasn't on these medications, and I sympathize for parents because it was a tear. I mean, the, he, he, we could not control him in the offices. It came to a point where it was hard for me to even allow them in the offices while they were receiving treatments. Mm -hmm. After they started CBD, what a difference. I mean, I, I saw it firsthand, not going to happen for everyone, but they were able to eliminate, I think this kid was on a cocktail of five or six different drugs. He's down to one standard prescription now that they commonly use and the CBD, the 3,500 milligram CBD. Um, now this child had a rough background, he had some other disabilities, which many people who have ADHD do have other comorbidities. But, so we saw success with it. My hypothesis is, is this. ADHD, according to Dr. Berman, works by binding to the dopamine receptor, allowing more dopamine to be available. Now, if we look at the specifics of ADHD, what's really happening in these people's brains is there's a, I'll call it an enzyme, just like we've talked about CBD before, and this enzyme actually goes through and it destroys dopamine. We don't know yet the effects of CBD on this enzyme. I'm wondering if in the future we're going to see that it blocks that enzyme's activity, just like it does to raise our body's natural endocannabinoids, and if that's why we're seeing such amazing results without the side effects that we see with amphetamine-based prescriptions for children. So absolutely. I love hearing that. It is so exciting because th the sweetest people in our population are our children, right? So yeah, whenever true. someone talks about these kids, I mean, my heart breaks for that child that is being drugged up to the point just so he can function and keep his parents sane, right? But it's just so tragic to hear of a story like that and hear of a child that's on Ritalin and all these drugs and, and their doctors and their, par and their parents are just trying to do what's right by the kid. And every synthetic medication has a side effect. Um, and the, the beauty of cannabis is that it doesn't have a side effect. It's an all natural. It comes from a plant. So if we can try it and it works, Thank you, Lord, right? I mean, that's what we want. And that is our goal here at CBD BioCare. The reason you partnered with us is because that is our goal, is getting this message out. If it can help even one child, give it a try. Not because we're trying to sell more product, because we're trying to help another child, because we're trying to help another person. If this product can make a difference and get a child off a of medication, then it's a win.
One hundred percent of the time. Absolutely, and it's interesting because you're you're seeing you're seeing all our information out there. You were talking about using this for treatments, and 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 we're we're starting to see them do that in the literature. They actually ran. If people are familiar with the Sativex, that's the prescription cannabis. Now, I want to make a big disclaimer. That's a synthetic cannabis. So a lot of people have a lot of bad reactions to that. That's what happens with synthetic cannabis. That's not what we're talking about though, right? But they did do um, some actual trials with adults with ADHD in 2017. And they had really good results as far as the ADHD reduction symptoms went. But because it was synthetic, people experienced some side effects on the synthetic end. What we're seeing with the CBD, to your point, something that's natural, something that is not coming out with these side effects. In my point of view, why would we not try this when we know it's, 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 it's fact that these other drugs are dangerous? Many of them that we're currently using have a black box warning for cardiac arrhythmias because they're, 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 they're amphetamines, they're amphetamine-based drugs. So I want people watching to know that we're not telling you to cold turkey, stop giving your child a medication because you are being seen by a physician who is well-intentioned. So what we would recommend, and I'd want you to speak on this even further, Dr. Frank, is that you need to find a holistic practitioner, someone who is not just from Western medicine, uh, schooled and trained, because they're most likely not going to be quite as informed about cannabis. It's new to the marketplace, which is so shocking, right? This is a product that's been around for thousands of years, but yet we've only known of an endocannabinoid system that we have that cannabis responds well with, works in conjunction with, watch that video, you'll learn more about it, for 30 years. So we're, it's so young. So seek out a functional medicine or a holistic practitioner who can assist you through this process um, and, and see if it's something beneficial for your child. Absolutely. It's worth going that extra step. I'll mention some other reasons why. And I'll say this too. I, I do believe on this topic especially that there are, whether we're holistic or medical doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, that there are a lot of people that are frustrated seeing these young individuals on the drugs. So I tell parents, yes, some physicians are gonna shut you down and say, oh, that's absurd, no. I think you're gonna be surprised at some of the feedback that you get of, oh yeah, go, go for it. Yeah, I'd like to, I would like you to try this. Now, with that being said, when you seek out the care of a holistic practitioner, a functional medicine practitioner, you're gonna get a different type of approach. So in my world, I, I look at this young kid and I say, why is his dopamine so messed up? Is this all genetic or are there other reasons? Are there food allergies? Are there iron deficiencies? Is this a vitamin D deficiency? Is this child not getting any sunlight exposure? Are there omega-3 fatty acid deficiencies? Something we can test for in blood work. These are things that we look at to find that, that root cause. Now from a treatment standpoint, I like to take it a step further whether or not they're working with an MD, if, look, if you already are, this is going to complement that kid's treatment therapy, or hopefully one day it, it can replace it if that's what everyone concludes on now. So a basic question, how else do you increase dopamine? If the problem is a dopamine deficiency, and we're saying CBD is good because it helps to increase it and make it more available, how else can you naturally do that? Well, some really simple things, eating more protein, a healthy sources of protein has been shown to increase dopamine. Exercise, 100% of the time has been shown to increase dopamine. Getting a regular sleep cycle. Are these children up late at night on their phones? Are they watching TV? If you're an adult, are, are you up late on your phone browsing? Regular sleep increases dopamine. Listening to music, instrumental music, especially if it's one of those songs that gives you the chills because it's like that. Those have been clinically shown to result in an increase of dopamine. Meditation has been shown to increase dopamine levels. So my question would become, why is this not the first line of defense when we're trying to attack this? Why are we not working with natural supplements, whether it be CBD or vitamins and minerals, and making these lifestyle modifications? Especially, I mentioned it earlier, if it is an adolescent or adult group, 
if you are addicted to a nicotine or a tobacco product, you, you, you are going to have to stop because if you want to treat the ADHD, these products lead to mass amounts of dopamine release and you're, 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 you're messing up your body's dopamine reward cycle with that. So that would be the other big thing, but why aren't we stopping there? Why aren't we starting there? Why aren't we starting there as the first line of a defense? 100%. Um, I wish I could just box you up and send you to everybody uh, <laughs> so that you could analyze all these people um, because I think you're just a wealth of information. And, um, you know, we have a lot of great medical tools available to us. We're definitely not saying there's not some amazing things that Western medicine brings to the table. But for this topic in particular, um, you know, we've seen wonderful things and, and the research supports it in terms of CBD. So what would you recommend if somebody's watching this and says, okay, well, I want to, um, I, I want to try CBD for my child and I want to introduce this to the practitioner that I'm working with, or I want to seek out a pr practitioner. W what's the next step? What do they do from here? Of course. So it's pretty simple. One, find a holistic practitioner, Google in your area, functional medicine practitioner, make sure like anything that they have a good reputation. Okay. Read through the reviews, look for customer testimonials, look at the Google reviews. Okay. Make sure they're legitimate. Like any profession, you have people who are good and bad, right? Now, if they want to talk to it with their practitioner, I would say get, bring in the podcast right up or the blog report that we're going to do, okay? You may have to educate your practitioner on this a little bit. Some will be respective, some won't. That's the way life is. Now, if you're not getting any help, reach out. Start to do your own research and start to make some of your own decisions when it comes to this stuff. At the end of the day, your body, you have a choice what it is you do or don't want to do with it, or your child, you're, you're their custodial guardian. You, you, you have a choice in what you want to do. So if it's something that you really want to seek out, don't just quit because you get shut down by one person or another person. Um, we're seeing great results with people. So, so start, start there. Gather research. Seek out a qualified functional medicine practitioner or naturopath. Talk to people, other people who have used CBD with their children. There's a lot of them. Go on Facebook, join a group, put up a post about CBD and, um, and ADHD. Look at what you find, a wealth of information from other anecdotal evidence, okay? Now, the, uh, the other thing I would say too is it's just that I, I covered most of everything that I would say. I don't think there's much else I would add to that. Oh, look at your child's lifestyle. If some of these things are, are triggering cues in your head, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm feeding my child fast food every day, or oh my gosh, my son does smoke. I never thought that this could be affecting his ADHD, or you know, they really don't exercise. Maybe some of that energy could be put into a gym membership or one of those trampoline places or wherever it is to go burn that child's energy up. Start to look at your child's lifestyle and make, make changes that you can make. Um, Dosing is always a common question if you do go the route of CBD. When it comes to that, you're, we always say start slow. It's the micro to, stand, micro to standard dose, which is usually recommended, which is a very low dose, somewhere between five and probably 60 to 100 milligrams a day. It's, 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 it's impossible to say. Start slow, work your way up until you start to see symptoms subsiding, until you're starting to see progress. I think that's great advice. I would also tell people that I would start at the 750 milligram uh, strength because it's 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 on the lower end. And um, we have found that a lot of people who are taking CBD for focus, for ADHD, um, or anything in this category, that they can get away with less and get the results. So you mentioned the child taking the 3500, but he had an extreme case. Extreme so case. I, I think most people um, can can start low. So I would suggest, and, and please correct me if you don't find this information accurate, but I would suggest with a quarter of a dropper of the 750 milligram to start. If you're seeing success with that, and I would do it, um, if they're having issues focusing or hyperactivity during the day, I would do it in the morning before they go to school, not right before they go to bed. Um, I would try that. And then you can always, if you're buying success, then you can even back off a little bit more to see where the threshold is. If you're finding success with a little bit less, then it's going to last you longer and it's a win-win. Um, but if you start to see some of the old behaviors creep back in, 
then you know that a quarter of a dropper is your perfect, um, you're creating that perfect balance. So it's a little bit of an experiment. Um, and just like anything that we're doing more naturally, it's not going to be like taking a pill. Um, I think it's something that we'll begin to see, right? And it's something that um, some kids will get an immediate response, but most kids um, will actually increase the benefit over, I would say, a, a two-week period. W would you agree with that? I would. I would agree with everything you said. The 750, quarter of a dropper, very safe number for a lot of people. I, I would agree. Give it time. I think one of the things that makes CBD such a, such a wonderful thing is the fact that, yes, sometimes we do see those instant results, whether it's an improvement in sleep or an improvement in anxiety. But I think one of the best, one of the best aspects of it is that it does take a little bit of time because it's rebalancing your body. It's helping with the dopamine receptors. It's not causing that immediate change because anytime we have something instantaneous, overwhelmingly instantaneous, like if we were to take an Adderall or a Ritalin, it's going to come with side effects. So I tell people that time is an important thing. And I think it's a, a wonder. I think it's actually a wonderful thing. I, I agree. And I would tell parents also, here's the beautiful thing about cannabis. Our product, for example, has no THC. So whether you buy CBD BioCare or another company, um, you know, make sure you, you vet the company, you do your research, um, but you want full spectrum but without the THC and to be legal, it has to have 0.3% or less. So even if it does have a little bit of THC in it, you're not, your child's not going to feel that at, at all within the legal limits. Um, but a full spectrum is definitely the way to go. You don't want to take an isolate because then you're only getting the CBD, not the, the rest of the cannabinoids that make this a medicinal product, but your child's not going to get stoned. They're not going to get sick. They can drink the whole bottle and be okay. It might have an upset stomach, but that's it. There's going to be no negative. So that's what I love about this product is it's so safe. So why, why not start there? Why not, you know, try that first as opposed to going straight to some of these harmful medications that, that, that may be helpful, but what, el what else are they doing that we don't that's know about? That's exactly it. There's just... There's too much unknown. Some will argue there's unknown about CBD, but I think there is a consensus. It's been around for a long time. We, and even if you did have the THC, it's been around for a long time too. We know that the, the harmful aspects, it doesn't have a black box warning. Let's put it that way. That's for sure. It, it, exactly. Um, so it's nothing to be scared of. Um, is there anything else you feel like we've missed on, on this topic? I, I know that we've covered a lot. We've talked about, um, you know, how much you should take, where you should start, some of the dangers of synthetics. Uh, we've talked about who to seek out for additional support and information. Have we missed anything? I don't think so, no. I would say this. There's a lot of people out there in life who are now adults and they're flourishing in their life and they were diagnosed a long time ago. And some of the most successful people I've spoke to are people who were diagnosed at a young age with AD. ADHD, who went a natural route, who didn't do the medication route, and they just took that, that energy and they channeled it into something else. And I think for a lot of parents, if you can find a way to, to take your kid's energy and get it to be something productive versus something destructive, I, I think these children may have some of the greatest potential. So maybe it's a blessing in disguise, who knows? Yep, I, I agree. I often say that sometimes our greatest challenges are also our greatest strengths. It's about learning how to manage uh, some of those challenges, right? Uh, and putting them, to your point, good use. So thank you so much. You're always a wealth of information. And if you are watching this or hearing this and you are at a loss and you don't have anybody in your area, then you can reach out to us and we'll put you in touch with Dr. Frank uh, because he is a wealth of information and I'm sure he can help. So thank okay. you, Dr. Frank. Thanks, Stacey. Anytime.